There's three types of people that come into our industry. Be honest in the comments and tell me which one are you. One, this person comes into this career as a second career. They take it serious. They respect their client's time, they show up early, and they never leave early. They're in there for the long haul because they understand if they fail, they could wind up back at that job that they hate. So usually, these people do well in our industry. Two, these are the people that never made it in any other thing that they did. They fail out of that, they get fired from jobs, they leave, and they blame everybody else for their problems. These people have no work ethic, and they think that when they get into barbering, that magically, something's going to happen, and some part of that is going to change, and they're just gonna make all this money because people think they're great. These type of people are the people who blame the owner of the shop, they blame everybody else around them for why they're not busy. They like to blame clients. They typically don't take walk-ins. They show up late. They leave early. And, you know, the rest of it. So, obviously, these people don't do well in our industry. You can't complain about not having what you didn't put in the work to earn. Or three, you have people that actually love this industry. They don't look at it as work. And they love to be there. They're not in a hurry to leave. They show up early. And they go the extra mile for their clients. And let me tell you a little secret also. The competition in this industry, it's soft AF. You can be successful in this business with a good attitude, showing up on time, and not leaving early. And you would already be doing more than the majority of what people do in this business. Now it's time to get patient. Get out of your own way. Watch this video as we're going to go through some of the biggest things I've seen as an educator that hold people back. If you're new to the channel, I have over 500 videos to help you learn. Consider subscribing, smash that like button, and do me a favor and drop a comment. And the rest of you, welcome back. And the hardest part during a haircut for most people in the beginning is erasing the skin line. That little area between the electric shaver and the trimmer, and actually I would say it even extends above all the way up to like an open taper, maybe even a half dot. Now this is actually a clip from one of my members only videos, but this also assumes that you've already put in your open taper guideline, and now we're gonna begin getting this harsh line out. And the first thing I'm gonna do, close the clipper all the way and begin just using a few teeth. We're going to cover this more thoroughly at the end of the video, but I wanna show you this example. I began with the clipper completely closed and I'm only using a few teeth, slightly bringing it up. As I continue, I'm gonna go all the way up until my clipper is back in the open position where I had set in my original guideline. Now I want you to notice something. I'm using a taper blade right now because it's soft and it's forgiving. But if you notice towards the back of that blend, I still have an area that I'm going to have to work out. This just proves my point that you're going to need more than one clipper. So when you go into war, you're gonna need more than a dull knife. Your machines can't mesh well if they're not set correctly, which is why I can't even help you at all if your tools aren't set up correctly. So let's run through that real quick. You're going to need two clippers, two trimmers, and an electric shaver to do this. Your clippers. One clipper should have a taper blade on it. You can keep that one set back. That one doesn't have to be zero gapped. The next one has to have a fade blade or a vapor blade, something that could cut close. And you absolutely have to zero gap it because this has to mesh well with your trimmer. You're going to need two trimmers. One trimmer you're going to keep very close. You're going to zero gap it. The second trimmer, you're going to set it back. Now you have the ability to both blend with the trimmer that's set back, or if you have to, to blend out that electric shaver line, you can use the other trimmer that's set close and your clippers are going to mesh well with your trimmers. So now that you actually have your stuff set up correctly, and if you don't know how to set up your stuff correctly, I've been dropping a ton of shorts. I'll put one here and you guys can see how we do the zero gap process. But I'm going to say one thing, it's much easier if you have one of those little microscopes, they're from Amazon, I'll link them down below, but you can actually see exactly what your blade's doing, if it's crooked, if it's perfect, and it's gonna make your life easier. Now pressure on the head. Assuming you've watched this and have your tools set up correctly, the next thing that can manipulate the length is the pressure on the head. Sometimes you might push a little bit harder with the exact same guard, same clipper, same trimmer, or you might reduce pressure, and obviously that's gonna cut less hair. When I push this into somebody's head, there's a little bit of give with the skin, and that's gonna allow the clipper to cut a little bit closer. Now, there's a few other things you guys might be doing that manipulate the length that make mistakes. This is something I've seen all the time. Holding it flat. Now, if I have a taper blade on here, you'll notice that the top of it's curved, so flat would actually be holding it out some. Now, if I'm holding it out too much, I'm manipulating the length. I could be holding it out further, 
and that's gonna leave the hair longer, and then I could begin bringing it down closer to the head, and that's gonna cut closer. I'm gonna use that to my advantage. But I warn you, if you don't hold this flat against the head at some point, none of these steps are gonna to work together. Now, if you look at this guide that I have right here, you can see this little triangle. I call this like a fade triangle, but essentially you can see how all your steps work together. They won't work together if you don't hit the length you're supposed to hit. So there's a way to manipulate your clipper, obviously, to move the lengths around within your steps, but also you have to get this flat at some point. During this process, it's, it's worth it to me to make sure that I get the skin line correct. So first thing I'm gonna do is start with it in fully open. I'm really loose with my fingers here. I'm really just using a corner of the blade. And again, I'm gonna keep combing. Comb that hair down after a couple of strokes and see what, what, what is actually the change that you made here. And don't be surprised if this starts to blend out the line without even moving the steps on your um, clipper because we've set ourselves up in such a good and easy way that I should be able to keep this, this part of the blend as low as I want it. And that's why I saved it for last in this case. Now I can be really specific with the membership videos, but YouTube would crush me if I try to do that here. All I'm going to say is I want you to pay attention to how light my hand moves at first, the angles that I keep the clipper on, and notice how I'm only using two or three teeth when I'm blending to get this line out. So that looks really good. I like what I'm seeing there. And uh, in this case, I'm almost tempted to go ahead and grab the half, but I'm not. I'm gonna stay in my lane and I'm gonna keep working on that bottom line. So I'm gonna go two clicks down. We kind of repeat the same process with just the corner of that blade. Even though it might appear that I'm holding this horizontally, I'm only touching down the right tip of that blade. Now, if you are a member and you did see this one, I just want to point out the fact that this guy here has a lot of different varying degrees of density. And if I was to perform all the steps perfectly around his head, the haircut would still not come out good. So it's very important that I use the best barber tool I have, which is actually my eyes. And I go to those dark spots. I'm very specific using those corners and I'm getting those spots to look lighter and smoothing them out. And then also, since I can't show you this clip in its entirety, you'll notice that there's still going to be a faint line where I put my original trimmer line. And that's why it's so essential that I have a clipper that's zero gapped and able to cut close to my trimmer. So when you begin to manipulate the clipper, for the beginner, this can be destructive to your haircuts. But as you gain experience, you'll use this to your advantage, skipping guards, finding speed, and practicing how to properly take risks in your haircut. Most students, especially women, they're very light-handed, and they feel like they might hurt the client by putting more pressure on the head. They won't anchor the clipper on the head, they'll leave the head too much, and it's kind of funny because in their mind, they're being careful, but the truth is they're bringing more risk into the haircut by doing this, by constantly leaving the head. Let's talk about cornering. This is another way that you can manipulate length with your guards. Now, I can't say what your haircut needs, but I can say this. When I put my guidelines in, I'll typically hold my clipper horizontally. When I remove guidelines or I'm blending, I'm going to tip my clipper on an angle and I'm only going to be using two or three teeth. Now, along with that, I can also lift it up and manipulate the length to leave more hair, or I can move it down. So it's a combination of doing these things together that's going to make this work properly. Now, the battlefield is always changing. The different textures and densities in your client's hair are endless. How do I cut them all? I would consider my membership where I can get specific on this topic, but I will tell you this. You're going to need a standard approach, something that allows you to do a solid haircut on anything that walks through the door but you're going to have to learn how to make small deviations in your process based on the type of hair that walks in. An example, if the client has fine hair, it's going to be really difficult to get the blend right in the parietal ridge area and above. However, on the back side of that, it's going to be easy to remove the skin line. So in that case, I might put a harsh skin line in. So on the other end of that, with coarse hair, the skin line can be difficult to blend. So I may handle that earlier in the haircut so I know I have enough room to make the blend smooth. If you're new to this business, if you're thinking about getting into this, if this is something that you thought that you couldn't do, or it's a second career, all the skills that you developed previous to this, all them skills are still gonna be able to be applied here with great success. If you're willing to show up early, put the hard work in that it takes to learn this, you'll be rewarded. If you don't leave early, if you stay with a good positive attitude and you continue doing the things you're supposed to to build your business, 
once you have your clientele, you're set for life. They're going to be yours. And once you create that great experience for that client, they're never going to forget it. They're going to tell their friends about it and it's going to grow. So hopefully you guys are inspired by this content. If you like it, do me a favor, thumbs up, notification set, and drop a comment down below. And you can do this. You can be better than what you are right now. You'd be surprised how successful you guys could be with the right attitude. This is the YouTube Barber Academy. I'm Mr. Eddie Barber, and I'm out of here. Peace.